Today I've got a nice functional equation that comes from the short list for the Romanian Masters math competition. So let's see what we have here. Our goal is to determine all functions f from r to r such that f evaluated at a squared plus ab plus f of b squared is equal to a times f of b plus b squared plus f of a squared. And we're going to use like fairly standard strategies for tackling functional equations here. And that is we're going to start by taking arbitrary values for A and specific values for B and then switch it up until we get some sort of nice relationship between values of this function for which we can narrow this function down to just a couple of possibilities. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a to be equal to a. So in other words, a is free, and then we'll set b equal to zero. So choosing one of these variables to be equal to zero is like a standard choice because that has a big simplification effect. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have f of a squared plus f of zero occurring on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we'll have a times f of 0, and then plus, well, 0 squared times f of a squared. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, looking at this, we see that a is squared in two out of the three appearances here. That's actually going to be pretty helpful because a and minus a both square to a squared. So we can come up with a similar formula here where we replace a with minus a, and then we can maybe add or subtract them to get some simplification. Okay, so for my next substitution, I'll take a to be equal to minus a, and I'll take b to be equal to zero, just as I did above. So let's see, that's going to leave me with f of a squared, well really f of negative a squared, but as we talked about, that's the same, plus f evaluated at 0 equals minus f evaluated at 0, plus f evaluated at a squared. Okay, but most of these terms are the same, so this is the same as this. This left-hand side is the same as this left-hand side. That gives us motivation to subtract these two equations. So if we subtract the two, these two equations, we get some nice simplification. In particular, we have 2 times a times f of 0 is equal to 0. But this is for kind of any value of a. In particular, this is valid for a equals 1 half, for instance. If we plug in a equals 1 half, we get f of 0 equals 0. That's good news. We've got our first value of our function. We have f of 0 is equal to 0. Okay, now we're going to roll this the other way and we'll take b to be arbitrary and then set a equal to 0. So let's see what that leaves us with. So like I said, we're going to set a equal to 0 and we'll take b equal to b. Look at what we have and see where that's going to point us towards. So what does that leave us with? So into our functional equation, we'll have f evaluated at 0 plus 0 plus f of b squared. So that's going to be f evaluated at f of b squared equals 0 plus b squared plus f of 0. But we determined f of 0 is 0, so that's just b squared. Great. But now we'll use the fact that every non-negative real number is the square of some other non-negative real number. So in other words, by replacing b with the square root of x, notice b squared is positive there, that leaves us with f evaluated at f of x is equal to x, and this is valid for all x bigger than or equal to zero. Not yet do we know if this is valid for all x, only for x bigger than or equal to zero. That's because we built this off of this setup right here where we're only putting non-negative values into the function. Okay, so now seeing this, we'd probably like to extend this to negative values of x as well. 
And how can we do that? Well, we'll play a similar game to what we did over here but we'll do arbitrary values of B and we'll take one for A. So first we'll look at A equals one and B equals B. So plugging that into our functional equation will give us something like F of one plus B plus F of B squared equals, well, let's see, we'll have F of B plus b squared plus f of 1. And now we'll plug in a equals negative 1 and b equals negative b. So we want to change the sign on both of those instead of just changing the sign on 1. And we'd like to do that so that we don't change like this a times b term. It'll still be b. Okay, so let's see, that leaves us f of 1, because negative 1 squared is 1, plus b, plus f of b squared. So the left-hand side is the same, which is good. And then the right-hand side will be negative f of negative b, and then plus b squared plus f of 1, again, because negative 1 squared is 1. But now from here, we'll notice that most of these two equations are the same, giving us motivation to subtract these two equations again. So if we subtract these two equations, the two left-hand sides cancel. This b squared cancels the b squared. The f of 1 cancels the f of 1. And we're left with f of b plus f of minus b is equal to 0. In other words, we have f of minus b equals negative f of b, which tells us that f is an odd function. OK. So now that we have f as an odd function, we can extend this green colored box to all values of x. So let's do that. So let's take x to be bigger than 0. Notice that means that negative x is less than 0. And now let's look at f evaluated at f of negative x. So since f is odd, we can bring this minus sign out. That leaves us with f of negative f of x. Then since f is odd again, we can bring it out. That leaves us with negative f of f of x. But now since x is bigger than 0, we can use that green box to write this as negative x. So now we have f evaluated at f of negative x is equal to negative x. So that means we can extend this guy up here to the equation f of f of x equals x for all real numbers x. That actually gives us a couple pieces of information. That also means that this function has an inverse. Well, the inverse is just itself. But if a function has an inverse, it's bijective. But what we'll need kind of in an upcoming step is that f is injective. In other words, f is one to one. OK, so just to reiterate, we see f is invertible. Invertible is equivalent to being bijective or one to one and onto. But if it's one to one and onto, then it's most definitely one to one or injective. OK, so let's clean this up and move on to the next step. So far, we've determined that f is an involution. What I mean by that is f evaluated at f is equal to the identity function. That's the definition of an involution. So now we're going to keep going and plug in some other kind of values for a and b to see what we can do with our functional equation here. So looking at this guy right here, I'd like to simplify the interior of this as much as possible. I can do that by setting a equal to maybe something free variable x and b equal to negative x. So let's do that. a is x and b equals negative x. So into our functional equation, that'll give us f of x squared minus x squared and then f of x squared. So this part simplifies just by design. And then that'll be equal to x times f of negative x plus x squared plus f of x squared. OK, now let's use some things that we know. First of all, we know that f evaluated at f is the identity function, meaning this guy right here is just equal to x squared. 
We also know that f is an odd function, so we proved that in our previous board. So we can bring this minus sign out, that leaves us with minus x times f of x. And then we have plus x squared plus f of x squared. But that looks pretty nice because we can do some simplification. We can subtract an x squared from both sides and that cancels, leaving us with f evaluated at x squared equals x times f of x. And that's a pretty nice simple functional equation at this point. So what would we like to do here? Well, now we're gonna hinge the fact that we know that f evaluated at f of x equals x to replace x with f of t. So now we'll set x equal to some value of f, so it's equal to f of t. And I guess like you might say that we need something to do that because what if this special value of x doesn't ha occur as the output of the function, but let's recall that this implies surjectivity as well as injectivity. Okay, so plugging that into this equation will leave us with f evaluated at f of t quantity squared equals f of t times f of f of t. Okay, so there's where we are there. But next, we know that f evaluated at f of t is t. So here we have this is t times f of t. But we can use this rule again to rewrite that as f of t squared. So here we have this is f of t squared. But finally, we can use injectivity to set these two interiors of the function equal to each other. So that means we have f of t quantity squared equals f of t squared. That implies that f of t is equal to plus or minus t just by taking the square root of both sides. Okay, so that's a real good place to be. We know that f of t equals plus or minus t. So that really points us towards kind of an obvious direction, and I'll write that as a question. Maybe our two solutions are the functions f of x equals x for all x, or f of x equals negative x for all x. But that's not quite what we have yet, because this tells us that some values of f might be positive the input and other values might be negative the input. You want to show that you know once we choose a positive or negative output, we have to stick with it for all you know, numbers that we put in. So that's the last thing to show. And we'll do that by way of contradiction. So this will might maybe be our claim that finishes the whole thing off. So claim is that we have this or this. And so let's prove that claim. So like I said, we're gonna do it by way of contradiction. Let's um, take positive numbers A and B that are not equal to each other. So they're positive and not equal to each other, such that F of A equals A, whereas F of B equals negative B. Well, how could we take them to be positive well, we were able to take them to be positive just because f is an odd function, so we might as well only work with positive numbers. Furthermore, if we take them to be positive numbers, that means we can write a as x squared and b as y squared for x and y both positive. Well, indeed, x is really just equal to the square root of a and y is equal to the square root of b, but I think it'll be nicer to work with this x and y instead of the square root of a and the square root of b. Okay, so now under this change of variables, we see that this equation looks like f of x squared equals x squared, whereas this equation looks like f of y squared equals negative y squared. But now we'll take our original functional equation and replace a with x and we'll replace b with y. So this might seem a little bit confusing because we used a and b up here, but these a and b up here were like specific values that gave us this weird setup, whereas this is like inputs into our functional equation. So maybe we chose kind of incorrect variables up here, but I think it's okay. Okay, so plugging this in up here gives us f of, let's see, x squared plus 
xy plus f of y squared, but we know f of y squared is negative y, so we can make this negative y squared. And then on the right hand side, we have a f of b, so that's going to be x f of y, and then plus y squared plus f of a squared, but that'll be x squared. But now let's recall that this guy right here could be one of two things. This is either equal to x squared plus xy minus y squared, or it's equal to negative x squared minus xy plus y squared. And that's because we have this up here, f of t is either plus t or minus t. And then furthermore, we have the same sort of question right here. So this f of y is either equal to y or negative y. So that means we really have four cases to check here. We have the positive case here matched with the positive case here, the positive case here matched with the negative case here, and then the other two matchings with the negative case. So let's maybe first look at the matching of the two positive cases. So I'll just put two pluses over there to say that we're doing that. Okay, so that gives us the equation x squared plus xy minus y squared equals xy plus x squared plus y squared. So we get some simplification. So this xy cancels this xy, and we're left with 2 times x squared minus y squared equals 0. But that means that x equals really plus or minus y. But since we took um, both of them to be positive up there, let's see, up here, that means they have to be equal. But notice if x is equal to y, then that means that a is equal to b, which brings us to a contradiction. Okay, so this plus plus case brought us to a contradiction. Okay, so now let's maybe look at the plus minus case, and then I'll leave you the other two cases for homework. So what I mean by the plus minus case is we take the positive from this, we have x squared plus xy minus y squared, and we take the minus from this. So that's going to be equal to negative xy plus x squared um, plus y squared. But now moving some things around, we'll see that that is equivalent to x squared and then plus xy minus y squared equals zero. So first off, notice that x equals y equals zero is a solution to this equation, but that's not allowed because we're supposing that a and b are positive and thus x and y are also positive, which means we must have a solution where all of those are positive, but you can check that that is impossible. In fact, there are no more real solutions to this. So let's see, no real, solutions with x, y, both positive. So you can maybe check that by using the quadratic formula on x over y squared plus x over y minus one. You can divide this whole thing by minus y squared and use the quadratic formula. So that means that this case is also not possible. So we've got like a little contradiction there as well. Then, like I said, I'll let you guys check the other two cases, the minus minus case and the minus plus case. But in the end, what that tells us is that what we either have f of x is always equal to x or f of x is always equal to negative x. And then finally, the last thing you'd want to check is that both of those equations actually satisfy this functional equation, but that's pretty easy to do. So I'll leave that to you as well. And that's a good place to stop.